the Think Institute. What methods can you share in how to defend the faith with someone who denies Christianity and the truths of the gospel? Okay, well, here's what I'll say about this, and I talk about this quite a lot. Do not just try to defend Christianity on the non-Christian's terms. If they demand evidence, do not just start shelling out evidence. Instead, compare worldviews. And you know who does a great job of articulating this is Eli Ayala of Revealed Apologetics. He is masterful at talking about how you have to compare worldviews. Otherwise, if you don't do that, it's just like slinging rocks over the fence to the other side. They're in your, their yard, you're in your yard, and you're just slinging rocks at each other from each other's worldviews. That's not the best way to defend your faith or share your faith. So instead, here's how you do it. First, ask questions to find out what they actually believe. Ask questions like, what do you mean by that? Repeat back to them what you heard them saying. See if they'll agree with your interpretation of what they say. Both parties, when you are engaging this way, both parties have to defend their worldview. Both parties have the burden of proof. It is not just the Christian. The atheist, the skeptic, the non-believer, whoever it is, the Muslim, the Mormon, the Roman Catholic, whoever it is, they have the burden of proof as well. Again, quick disclaimer, Roman Catholics can be Christians, but the Roman Catholic Church does not teach the true gospel. Okay, and I can ask, I'll be happy to answer questions about that as well if you want to know. Now, uncover the contradictory belief that the non-Christian holds, and there is always a contradictory belief. For example, I just talked about Islam. Islam says that Jesus is not God in the flesh, but Muhammad, their prophet, said, go back and follow the signs, and if you go back and follow the signs, they will reveal that Jesus is, in fact, God in the flesh. That's a contradiction within Islam. Uh, another example would be how an atheist believes in morality. I had somebody comment on a YouTube video recently who said that religions have committed more heinous crimes than any other thing in the world. And then in the exact next sentence, he said, morality, there is no right or wrong. Morality does not exist in nature. Incredible. So on the one hand, religion is incredibly immoral and evil and terrible. On the other hand, there's no such thing as objectively evil and terrible and immoral uh, immorality. Do you see that's a fundamental contradiction. Now sometimes it's really easy like in that YouTube comment, sometimes you have to dig a little bit more, but there is always an internal contradiction and inconsistency in the non-Christian worldview always. After you uncover that, next you talk about your Christian beliefs. Explain how the Christian worldview does two things. One, it provides the very categories needed for the objection to make sense. It provides the rules of morality. Okay. It provides the rules of logic, etc. Then you're going to show that Christianity does not violate those rules. You're going to show, you're going to make a positive case for Christianity. So they say Christianity is immoral. You're going to say, you can't even make sense of immorality if God is not there, if Christianity is not true. But um, let's talk about those objections as well. Here's why Christianity actually is not immoral. And if they say, oh, I don't accept that, you can say, well, you can't account for morality on your worldview anyway. You have to grant my worldview in order to make sense of morality. And then from within my worldview, uh, Christianity is not immoral. So you're going to talk about the Christian faith, make a positive case, and then you're going to make an evangelistic appeal. Share with the person how the very same Bible that makes sense of the conditions they need for their objection to make sense and doesn't violate those, those conditions at all. That same Bible also says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and that Jesus Christ died for sinners, was buried, was raised to life on the third day, and that he will give eternal life and forgiveness to all who trust in him. Make an evangelistic appeal.